Hey, Divi Nation, thanks for stopping by our documentation section to learn a bit more about Divi's theme options. So Divi's theme options are a huge collection of both site-wide or maybe section-specific settings. So for instance, you're able to configure your logo, um, your color palette, uh, favicon, um, navigation, layout, ads, SEO, integrations, Divi updates, all of that is done from the theme option settings. So there's a lot to go over and we're gonna go over every bit of it so that you understand how to get the most out of them in this video. Check it out. In this video, I'll be giving you an overview of the Divi theme options. These custom theme options allow you to control various parts of your website. It includes basic options like adding your logo, setting your default color palette for your theme, or setting your default layouts for posts and pages. It also includes more advanced options like allowing you to add custom code to various parts of your theme. Uh, there are many options to choose from, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing to do is to find your theme options in the left sidebar of your WordPress dashboard. It would be located under the Divi section right here called theme options. Once there, let's look at the general tab. Under the general tab, you can Enter your logo, your favicon uh, here. Uh, disable fixed navigation, which is by default in your Divi theme. Uh, you can choose to have a Divi styled gallery here uh, instead of the default WordPress gallery, which is by default. Uh, you can also choose a default color palette here. Uh, this is convenient, especially uh, for saving you time in the long run uh, when building your site because if you whatever you set here this will be the default color palette that also shows up in all the modules uh, in the Divi Builder when you're building your site. You can also choose to grab the first image of your posts uh, here by enabling it. This is helpful for instance if you want um, if you don't have any featured images set for your posts. Also, uh, this option to enable your blog style mode. Uh, by default, Divi truncates all of your blog posts on the index page. Uh, but if you choose this option, you can show the full content of your blog by default. The sidebar layouts are by default a right sidebar. This is true for your your theme in general and also for your WooCommerce pages if you have WooCommerce installed. The next two, Google API key and NQ Google Maps script, both are related to your Maps module. So if you want to include a Maps module on your site, you will want to add your Google API key here and make sure this is enabled. You could also customize which social icons show up on your site here. Um, by default, you have Facebook, Twitter, Google, and RSS icons visible. And also you can attach a URL to those icons here. By default, you will have nine products displayed on your uh, WooCommerce archive pages. You can change that here. You will also have six posts displayed on your category page, five on your archive pages, five on your search pages and five on your tag pages. Of course, you can always set the those default default number of posts here. And the date format, of course, it can be changed. Uh, use You can use excerpts when defined. Uh, this, if you are familiar with WordPress, you, you'll know that you can add excerpts uh, when editing a post uh, at the bottom of each of those posts. Uh, if you do that, you can choose to show them here. Uh, responsive short codes by default is enabled. You can disable those that here. Uh, the Google fonts subsets, this is for non-English languages. Uh, you can choose to enable that here. By default, Divi doesn't show the back to top button uh, in the bottom right of your browser when you're scrolling down a page, but you can choose to enable that here. Smooth scrolling is a useful feature to allow uh, that effect uh, on the mouse wheel when scrolling. Also, uh, when linking back to an anchor link on certain pages, 
uh, enabling this feature will allow it to smoothly scroll to that location, which is a, a really nice effect. You can also disable, excuse me, yeah, choose to disable translations. And by default, Divi conveniently minifies your JavaScript and CSS files. Of course, you can choose to disable that if you need here. And lastly, the custom CSS section. This is not the only place you can add custom CSS to your theme. Uh, if you rather, you can also add it to your theme customizer. Um, also your page settings. Um, if you only want to add it to uh, a certain page and then also the more traditional way is to add it to your, your child theme style.css file. All right, let's go on to our navigation theme options. Here you have three different categories, pages, categories, and general settings. For the pages navigation settings, you can choose to exclude certain pages from the nav by default. Uh, you can choose to enable or disable drop down menus, show your home link on your menu. Uh, also, you can choose how to sort your page links. By default, it's sorting to the post title. Uh, you can also order your pages by ascending or descending. And of course, change the number of drop down tiers shown, which by default is three. Similarly, you'll have uh, the same options for category pages here. Uh, let's go on the general settings. Uh, you can choose uh, to disable top tier drop down menu links by default if you like. And this option here uh, gives you an alternate, excuse me, alternative scroll to anchor method, which uh, sometimes works better if um, you're having trouble linking back to certain anchor links on a page. All right, let's go on to our builder theme options. By default, um, Divi automatically stores your CSS files as a static file, a cached static file, which is helpful. Uh, but for some reason, if you wanted to disable that and go back to your, uh, the old way of storing uh, your CSS files in line, you can choose to, dis uh, excuse me, enable that here. And by default, your product tour will show up the first time you use the Divi Builder. If you want to disable that, you can here. All right, let's go on to our layout theme settings. This is broken down into single post layout, single page layout, and general settings. Let's go to single page post layout first. You can see that you can choose which items to display in the post info or meta data section of your posts, which by default, all of these are set. But if you wanted to disable, sim simply click on one, you'll see it fade out to gray. You can also choose to disable showing comments on posts by default and disable showing thumbs or excuse me, placing thumbs on your post by default. Uh, for the single page layout, um, you can also choose to enable thumbs and comments if you like. For general settings, again, you can choose, excuse me, you can choose which uh, post info or metadata, metadata to show on your post sections. And also whether or not to show thumbs on your index pages. Let's go on to our layout theme options. You see this is broken down into single post, single page, and general settings. Let's look at the single post layout first. You can see you can choose which items to show up uh, in your post info section. This is the section right underneath your post title that shows the author date, categories, etc. You can choose what uh, to show up by default here. Simply click on one, you'll see it grayed out. That'll, that'll tell you that it's disabled. You can also choose to show comments or place thumbnails on your post by default. Um, going to the single page layout, you can see both the same option here. You can choose to place thumbs on the page by default and show comments, which since it's a page, these are disabled by default. Uh, the general settings, uh, 
this is actually the post info section for the pages. So if you want to control what's showing on uh, your underneath the titles of your certain pages, you can choose that here. Also, you can choose to show thumbs on your index pages here or disable it if you need. Next, we have ads here. You can click to enable uh, the the advertisements on your website. Uh, this can. The next tab is ads uh, here. You can choose to add uh, advertisements to your posts uh, by enabling this um, and filling out the the input boxes here with your banner image and your URL a post advertisement will show up underneath the post content of your post so uh, also you can add AdSense code here that would display in the same place next is the SEO theme options here you can add your custom SEO settings for your home page single post page and index pages let's just look at the home page first you can see that we can enable a custom title meta description meta keywords and canonical URLs here if uh, if enabled then I can just add that custom title uh, add that meta description here and then add those keywords in this on these input boxes here also choose how the titles are displayed and what character is going to separate uh, the blog name and post title for the single post page SEO you'll have very similar settings here so feel free to change and uh, edit those also for index page SEO you can choose to enable canonical URLs meta descriptions and so on our next section integration by default the integration section will allow you to add custom code to your header, uh, body, top of your posts, bottom of your posts. And with all of these enabled, um, you can then simply add the scripts or whatever you need to these boxes to put custom code in basically any part of your website. So if I needed to add a custom jQuery, script I can put it here um, if I needed to add some Google Analytics uh, tracking code I could add it to the body here so a very convenient way to add custom code to your website uh, the last thing is the updates tab this is where you can enable uh, the ability to update your theme uh, and plugins that you have from elegant themes the username is entered here and then your API key which can be found uh, in the actual members area if you go to elegantthemes.com log in you go to your members area and then you click on the account tab right there you can go in and find your API key once that's set you can uh, save your changes and then you're able to update your theme the last two things you'll notice on your Dibby theme options is these two icons over here. The first one is the portability option. Uh, basically, this is the option to import or export uh, your theme options, which is a helpful feature uh, whenever you want to use the same options to start another build. You can do that here. Also, you can restore uh, your defaults here in one click so if you want to com start completely over from scratch go ahead and click the button and it will restore all of your theme options to the defaults